Hi folks, Mr. Teslonian back here again. I'm going to take you from the ground up, step by step, how to take what you see in front of you basically. Other than that shiny pipe sitting there at the angle, well, I have 40 feet of that, not just a little section. Uh, I just didn't want to put that up there on the truck. Uh, we're going to take basically what you see here in front of you and we're going to make this little truck right here, Chevy Love, run on synthetic gas from wood. Uh, we're also going to precipitate out all of our liquids, uh, the crude oil, the bio crude, and our methanol producing products out of that smoke in the process and hopefully run that around our exhaust in the end, converting that over to another usable fuel and putting it into our engine. Uh, so let me go through real quick what we're going to have done here with what you see in front of you. Uh, like I said, the shiny pipe here at the angle, it's not just one little section. We need 40 feet of that actually for my truck here. Uh, that's going to help us create the radiator system as well as these three nice chunks of one inch black iron pipe you see threaded on both sides. Uh, those are all seven foot long right there. So that's going to give us uh, all together what 21, so 61 feet of piping between the two inch and the one inch uh, for our radiator system. And I can't imagine that that's not going to get our smoke from the synthetic gas production reactor here down below the uh, dew point. So I don't think we'll need much more than that. Anyways, so you got the one big tall tank here as you can tell. That big tank is our material tube. And so we're going to just cut a top, uh, a blow by pressure relief top with a big spring in this. Uh, we're also going to cut the bottom of that tank and we're going to attach this tank cut off right here right to the bottom of it because this tank's smaller than that one what this will do is that has a reduction point and that's actually where the paralysis is going to take place is right there uh, our pyrolysis process is going to actually take all that charcoal and then at the bottom of this tank instead of leaving it the same size I'm actually going to go underneath a little bit and make that slightly reduce more probably about an inch of reduction from the actual diameter of what you see uh, and that'll actually help us even reduce that charcoal, compact it just a little more before it has to go through. The smoke actually has to force itself through more of that charcoal, which will help convert more of it into an appropriate syngas that we need. A cleaner syngas, hopefully with less tar production. Uh, so basically that's where we're starting here. And the whole unit, that tank welded onto the bottom of that one, once it's done, will sit inside of one of our barrels here. Uh, about halfway down the bottom of the reactor, which will be this tank, will sit down about halfway into this barrel. And what that's going to do for us is give us a dead air space that the heat can travel around and that'll have this in the center of it preheating our material inside of it. Preheating this and keeping this nice and warm, especially driving down the road, taking a lot of our thermal energy off as the wind passes by. So it'll be insulation in parts of this uh, and also air channels in parts of this so that the smoke can get to the top and get back out through the rest of our system. All right, and so you see the second barrel here. Uh, and the second barrel is going to be for our hay filter system at the very end of everything. Right before it goes out and into the carburetor, uh, that's going to be completely packed full of straw. That'll help uh, the final drying process after we've run it through all the condensers and radiators. Which I'll also have, like you see over in the other project right here in the background, those condenser jugs like that, I'll have a few of those sitting at the bottom peaks of the radiator system running above this bed. Now the radiator system is actually going to be bolted down right to here across the top of the bed line here all the way down on both sides. It'll sit as high as the cab slightly pitched in. It'll be a big two inch pipe radiator system running across on both sides. That'll help to make sure that a lot of our gas is well below the dew point and precipitate its moisture out of it. That's plenty of radiator and if not what I've done here with the black pipe is I'm going to cut that up and make my new tailgate uh, a radiator tailgate out of it if that's necessary. So let me get this started by cutting this tank and once I get this tank cut I'll show you about taking the measurements for this tank here, welding the two together and getting our reactor and our material tube put together here and then into our barrel. Alright folks, uh, just going to take you through real quick where we are on the tank project. Uh, this is gasifier conversion. So here, let me show you something real quick on cutting your propane tanks. First of all, if you smell gas in them, or even if you don't smell gas in a propane tank, you should fill that tank all the way to the top full of water. And make sure while you're cutting it that you're cutting in a water line the entire time. Do not allow a, a large amount of open air space in them. But if you notice here, this is the weld line from the top of the tank there. 
this is the weld line. I went right below it and cut around and I still had one more chunk of strengthening steel they put right behind the weld line to cut through. So if you go about a half inch below the edge of the weld line and make your cut, you won't have to cut through two pieces of steel like I did here. Hopefully saving you uh, quite a bit of your bits and some of your time. So what we've done now, is, since we've got the top of that cut off, we've centered it and set it on our larger tank here. That's going to be our volume tank for our mass and our wood there, the larger gray one. This one's our reduction zone, our first of the reduction zones here. So we're now going to mark that out and cut out the gray tank so it's the same size going into this. Weld these two together and we're going to take up here, take a three inch hole saw. I'm going to make a three way mark here and try to leave about a half inch gap all the way around, small amount of material in the center and take three holes out with a two inch hole saw and leave a kind of a pre-screen area here with two inch holes in it that'll help to make sure that the material is not dropping into my screen below the ash screen too quickly so let me go ahead and get that done and I'll show you from there alright like I said I flipped the reactor now over I've taken that top piece back off just want to really quickly go over something here with you on the design if you notice right at the tip of my finger right here there's this black line carved in here right there going all the way around. That's the actual true dimensions of our uh, reduction zone here. So what I'm actually going to have is a slight reduction from the tank even from what the actual size of the reduction zone is. And what that will allow me is a small air gap right here and a downspout area that's going to allow for where my, our air inputs are going to be right here to constantly keep clean. The majority of the time if we have a little bit of an overlap here there's a little chance that something's going to come in and go back upwards and stay there anyways. Uh, I may get in there originally but it won't stay there so it's going to make sure our air flow is a lot more reliable with a small amount of overlap. So let me go ahead and keep going. Alright folks, uh, just a moment ago I showed you how we had cut the top off of this 7 gallon tank and removed a large section, a circular section out of this lower larger tank. And what I've done here is I ground the metals to make sure there's going to be a clean weld on both tanks. And I've tack welded now across this thing around all over the place. That's going to give us our first preliminary weld to it. The other thing that I've done here and you're going to notice this ring, whoever welded this on, I would have loved to have had that welded on there square originally, but it's not. Uh, so I'm going to end up having to cut it off. I had to put my hole to true square here. Uh, so you can see a 4 inch output hole here in our reduction area. Uh, we're going to go ahead now and implement some of our pipes in here. Drill holes and put our airflow pipes into the reactor here. We're going to have two sets. One's going to come in right here, right above that final burn hole and one's going to come in right here to allow for air to flow through a large chamber of charcoal. The, I have a feeling that the bigger the chamber of charcoal I can put the smoke through, the cleaner that gas is going to get before it gets out and into my radiator system and finally into the engine. So I wanted to show you real quick where I was, uh, just not far from where I showed you before. The only difference is that I've tack weld and ground and I've put the 4 inch hole here in the top. As you can see now, I can tilt the whole thing as one, as one giant reactor. So I'm going to flip it over and show you what it looks like from the inside. Alright, so now I've flipped it over the way it's supposed to go. You're going to notice the relative height to this system. I wanted a long distance traveling unit. I didn't want a short distance unit. So this should be able to give me quite a ways uh, before I have to refill this reactor. Uh, this is going to stick up in that truck a little ways out above that cab, obviously. So let me go ahead and just show you what we've got going on here for a lid to fill with our material. And as you can see, what it is, is actually the disc cut out of the other side. I made sure that it was larger than the hole we cut out of this side, which you can see there. So that's where we're going to fill our material into the reactor. It's going to go all the way down and finally burn down in the very bottom down there. I don't know how clear this is going to show up, but you should be able to see down in there a bit. See our final hole all the way at the bottom? Alright, so that's what it looks like inside. I can put the lid back on. And uh, I'm going to make now a mount for that lid so it's uh, able to seal really tight. You'll notice there's no air gap. That makes just a perfect seal right there. I'm just going to make it now so that it can actually blow by if there was a, a pop back inside of our gasifier reactor. This will actually have a spring to allow it to pop up. Probably about that high if it needs to be. 
So that's some of the next steps here and I'll go ahead and show you that when I get it done. All right, folks, i uh, go ahead and just show you a step more into the project here. As you can see, these welds have been fully completed all the way around, making sure that that's nice and sealed. There's no air leaks between the two of them. I've done a little bit of a test to make sure. Uh, and what you see here is a handle from the top of a propane tank. Looks just like this. I flattened out the loop over though. These were folded up on themselves. This one has actually an air gap around it. I don't like them to cover this. Uh, that one I could pound all the way closed. It left me two perfectly open sides right here and matching on this one as you can tell looking through there. We're gonna line those up. Let me walk you around and show you. We've cut a much bigger hole in here and to get that hole diameter what I did is cut off the bottom ring that was already attached to the propane tank because whoever had originally welded it on there had set it off center so much that I couldn't use it. Uh, so I've cut it off and that's about the same size as the hole right here so we're reducing one more time. So the three stages of reduction here and I'll show you when we get this all done what's the next step but let me go walk you around here. So I've now completed my weld on this side walked it around and now I'm gonna go ahead and form the other handle here and put it on right here. Uh, let me go ahead and do that real quick and I'll attach uh, another plate around this which I'll show you when we get to it and I'll also attach the other side of the bell up on top right here. Let me go ahead and grab that for a second show you what that's gonna look like if it'll stay up there correctly. Okay let me back off of that a bit. So there you go that's what that's gonna look like towards the very end. That's the end of the system right there it's going to rebell outwards like that. We're going to use the top end of that propane tank for that bell out. Uh, it's going to go through the reduction zone here. That's where the smaller zone is. And then back into the bell and then to the screen. And that's going to make sure that we get as much of the uh, paralysis as we can. And actually most of the burn action is going to be taking place up around our top line. And that's going to actually force the smoke to have to go through a compact layer of charcoal, which will help burn out a lot of the uh, impurities that are going to clog up our engines, and then also help convert a lot more of that to either hydrogen or carbon monoxide. So let me keep going here, and I'll show you when I get a little bit further on. All right, real quickly here, I wanted to update you on the progress that I'm making. As you can tell here, if I walk around, that whole circular section there made out of those two upper handles of the propane tanks is fully uh, welded on there, ready to go. You can see the upper uh, bowl put on there now. Let me show you what we've done inside of there. So there you go, there's a hole cut inside of that bowl. And this hole right now is about an inch of reduction between it, if you notice across my finger, between it and the edge of the inside. So it's going to reduce one more time before entering into this bowl. So if I take that off of there, you can see what we've got here. That's where I'm at right now. I'm going to do some work about uh, right around the center right here right now, attaching pieces, strengthening this up. This is going to get really hot right here. Uh, so I'm going to add some extra steel here real quickly before I put that bowl on top. I'll show you once we've had that extra steel and the bowl welded on, I'll show you what we're doing next. All right, folks, real quickly, I want to take you through some of the progress we've made. We finally sealed up and welded on our reverse bowl here, which will become the ash uh, reduction bowl setup. We've put an extra piece of steel, quarter inch all the way around uh, our reactor zone here, our, our reduction zone. And that's going to allow, because this gets so hot right here, that if, you know, there was a possibility that that steel that I had in there could have uh, melted down if there was ever an issue with this. This will give us a little more reinforcement for this zone. I can increase the temperature slightly in there and get a better reaction taking place. Uh, so you can see now, if I back up here, you can see that this is all ready to go. Uh, the next step here is to go ahead and attach our screen up here. Let me go ahead and fold this over so you can see what's inside of there. You notice I got one little offset hole from the uh, propane tank lid right here where my fingertip is. Uh, I'm going to have to cover that with a piece of steel. I don't think I want to leave an air gap like that. That'll be an off pressure area right there. Uh, you'll notice in here that this actually reduces again. You'll see how far underneath my fingers are sticking. Uh, that's another reduction point. This hole right here is actually smaller than the inside diameter of our other reduction point. So it's even a finalized reduction point before it goes into the ash container. This should guarantee a pretty good burn, a clean gas out of the end of it. 
Uh, right now I'm going to go ahead and start marking my hole zones across about right here somewhere. I'm going to take some measurements, try to make sure I put it about the right distance from right here. And we're going to go ahead and throw our air inlets right here, uh, all the way around. And I'll show you that when I got that hooked up and how we did it. Alright, a quick update of where we are in this thermal reactor unit. Real quickly, you can see the grate screen that I'm going to cut down and make it so that it'll fit right up on top of our reduction bowl. Uh, that'll be the final stage of the burn, and the material will have to fall through the screen into our ash catch down below. Uh, real quickly here, you can see these holes that I've drilled in there. Uh, I put four holes so far, and you can see these pieces of pipe already on two sides that I've cut and measured. They're threaded in at the moment. Uh, in fact, what I'll probably end up doing here is unthreading them now that I got my measurements the way I wanted it and welding it the other way around so I can always get to these, unthread the pieces. Uh, it makes it more manageable if you ever have to take it apart or clean it. So that'll actually be sticking out of there. And for now what we have is four half inch holes, or well, three quarter inch holes with half inch piping in them. Uh, I'm probably going to go through and put one more in between each one of them and then I'm going to stick those out like I showed you, threads out, and put caps on those. Uh, I'm going to try to run it with a four. It should be the right volume for this size of a vehicle. And later on, if I ever put this to a larger engine, a uh, generator or a bigger truck, uh, something like that, I can always open up these and attach right to it and I don't have to get in there and drill at that angle again. For now though, I believe if my mass airflow ratio is right, uh, this should create a perfect jet speed. It's just enough restriction on the flow to create a high pressure flow inside which will give us the temperature we're needing and if we need any others we'll already have it ready to go and we can always adapt immediately to that. Uh, I showed you in the last video that we had reinforced this. Uh, and all I'm going to do really quickly here is just chop down the screen now. Uh, the, the purpose of this final bell is hopefully by the time it gets into this, most of the material has become ash or is reducing down finally to an ash point. And that gas we've produced, which is actually being produced from here upwards, uh, this paralysis will be taking place here, producing gas that will be forced due to pressure inside a sealed tank will be forced up this. I'm going to try to turn so the wind's not affecting the camera here. Uh, will be forced up through the system. It'll be reduced through a heavy concentration of finer grade charcoal and then back through ash and out the screen and into our system where I'll show you from there. That'll help refine this gas we're producing, clean it up, and hopefully produce a lot less tars in our design. So give me a moment, chop that screen up. I'm going to build a couple of the elbows here, attach the pipes, and I'm going to show you what it looks like from there before we set this down inside of our barrel. All right, well, I just wanted you to meet one of my co-inventors here. He's helping me make the uh, gasifier. And just thought I'd give him a peanut here. He enjoys those, obviously. Come here, little man. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so let's go back to how far we've gotten with the gasifier real quick. Throw it through. All right, we're going to have some wind in the background here, but I'm going to really quickly take you through what we've done. Uh, you see these two longer pieces here that are welded on. You can see right here, you can see a flange, you can see the rods are welded. Uh, what those do is stop that screen from ever opening any further than this. You see we've got the screen fully sized to the right size. Uh, I just built a couple hooked hinges over here on the back, welded them on as you can see. Just holds the screen in place. Uh, what these do is make sure now if we ever do have to use the shakers to make sure if there's anything that builds up on the screen that it never can open up too far or fall out of place and that way you try to close it and it's always going to close right. Because basically most of the time it's going to be pulled nice and closed like this with just a little bit of play so that little bit of bumps going down the road can agitate it just slightly and keep it clean. You don't want it perfectly rigid. You also want to be able to, just in case something's gotten in there, say a rock or something's gotten in there that won't burn or anything like that, you can actually dump that into the bottom and get rid of it. All right, so now we're going to go down and show you. I left one hole open here to show you what it was. You can see it right there. Now the other three of these pipes are now hooked up. So I'm going to back up and show you how far those go down. There's a little bit of wind here. I'm going to try to make this quick block some of it off. You can see that other pipe here going down. Those are four air inlets that you can see here. Well, three put on, one to still go. Uh, we've got our top grate ready to go. Once this is mounted inside the barrel, we'll have the little cable that goes down to this. And that way we can actuate this from outside of the uh, entire system without ever going in there. I'll show you that when we get there. 
I uh, just thought real quickly here I'd show you what it looks like as it starts to come together this far and I just want you to remember you can build these things with very minimal tools I build most everything you see here with cordless tools mounted off a 12 volt battery sometimes especially if I'm off site like this and want to use the truck uh, so you can go ahead and use any of that I'm running the generator from a gasifier to weld all this together so basically using wood alternative energy to make a system to create more alternative energy all right, now that we've gone through and shown you basically the finished reactor, uh, just the cable, like I said, to go to this later on, I'm going to remove that screen. I'm going to go ahead and pull off all the metal here, the pipes and everything, now that I know where they go. And I'm going to start mounting this entire reactor now. Let me back up to show you. That system now is going to mount inside of that barrel. So I'm going to cut a hole in the lid of the barrel, which I'm going to do while it's all clamped down and weld while it's clamped down. Uh, start out with tack welds so you don't warp that steel. That's going to be the main key here, is not warping the metal on the lid of that barrel. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and start cutting barrel here and apply that reactor inside of the barrel. Uh, it's not going to sit all that far down into the barrel. As you can see here, it's probably only going to come up to about right here somewhere. And that's going to be the lid of the barrel and the rest from here all the way up will be actually inside the barrel. Everything else will be either outside or inside a secondary barrel. And we'll go ahead and try to find another barrel here to, to cover that for more insulated value here. Uh, so give me just a moment to start cutting that barrel and we'll do another shot once I've figured that out. All right, let me stand back just for a moment here just to give you a shot of the whole thing there. I've got the hole, like I said, uh, cut in the top of the barrel. I've set the reactor system down in there now. That's about exactly where it's going to sit. Uh, the only difference between what you see now and uh, the finished design is going to be air intake spots here where those pipes are coming up out of here. There'll be eight pipes coming out at the top of this. Uh, and also a gas output. And the gas output will probably be right out of the side right here. I, maybe I'll take advantage of what this is, but I think I'll actually take it right here out of the side, which I'll show you when I'm done. Uh, first of all, when you do any of your cutting or your welding on your lid, and I'll tell you why I did the lid here in a minute, but when you do that, make sure it's cranked down dead tight. You want to make sure this thing, and take a hammer, when you think that's tight, just come around and tap it with a hammer lightly around that ridge, and it'll keep tightening with your bolt. Uh, seal that thing real tight, do some tack welds, short runs, don't get it too hot when you weld it, and you'll keep this without warping it, it'll look good, it'll seal good, and that's a big key. I mean, creosote and other things are going to fill up inside of there and, and seal that up anyways in time pretty quickly. Uh, what this allows me, instead of going into the bottom of the barrel, this allows me easy access to my reactor head. Um, you know, so if I need to make any adaptions, add, take away, anything like that, all I have to do is pull now the, the rim off here, pull the whole reactor out, and I've just got a little collar sticking off instead of a whole barrel sticking over the thing and having to reach in there and try to drill the barrel around it and all the rest of it just wasn't going to work. Uh, so I ended up doing it through the lid. I think that allows me a lot of maneuverability so if any changes need to be made to make the system even better uh, we have easy access for that. So let me weld that together and then we're going to go up here. It's one of the last stages here. And we're going to go ahead and weld the lid on this and I think I've already showed you that. But give me just a second here and I'll put the lid up there. All right, real quickly here is an update. Take you through what we've gotten done. Uh, now we've got our hole cut in the top of the barrel, uh, and then we've now set our whole reactor system all the way down in there. And I left, just so you can see, it's, it's just about right there. The bottom of all that is right there. That's gonna give us not a lot of distance between the bottom. Still a foot and something, you know, in the bottom for ash catch. But that's going to give us just enough room so the heat has to travel all the way back up to the top of the barrel. Help keep that uh, reactor nice and hot in there. A lot of this will actually be insulated around certain key areas, and I'll show you that as we get there. Right now, our next step is, now that we've gotten this welded inside of there, one of the key things about welding this is do little sections. Never go around and just try to weld this whole thing around on such thin steel to thick steel. You end up warping this really, really bad. So just take a little section, move all the way over to the other side, do another little section, 
do a, a four post and then go in between opposites and just work yourself around slowly doing little sections at a time in each spot and you won't overheat and warp this metal you'll try to keep the form of this lid as best as you can because that's going to be our seal once it's fully cooled don't remove this band either until this is fully cooled down uh, once it's cooled I'm going to remove this band and we can flip this thing now over we're going to put our air intake pipes into the bottom of the reactor once again and out of the top of the barrel here so it's going to be easy for us to get the markings we need to put our holes through there let me go ahead and take that out of there now flip it around and I'll show you how to mount those pipes alright folks we're finally getting done here with the final steps of our reactors construction uh, as you can tell here I've got all the air inlet pipes into the reactor zone they're welded in the elbows are in place I even have them welded through the top of the barrel I've mounted all that pretty simple to measure out kind of mark there is a little bit of fundamental law of why there's a distance between this and this and in the end probably gonna have another set of pipes right about here offset from these other ones slightly higher coming in also and those will be for large draw regulation and this is our small draw regulation for the system so what I'm gonna do, do now is go ahead and flip that around throw it out inside of our 55 gallon barrel uh, which is right here I'm gonna cut a hole in the side of the barrel the hole saw uh, which is gonna be a two inch hole and then I'm gonna go ahead and drill uh, Alright, so the very next step for this, now that I've got that done, is to go ahead and stick this down inside this barrel. Uh, we're going to cut a hole in the side with our hole saw, a two inch hole. I'm going to go ahead and weld a coupler on there uh, so we can draw our gas out. I'm going to attach a low volume uh, electric 12 volt fan up to that and we're going to go ahead and fire up our reactor. Uh, give it a go and see how well it's going to work. So give me just a little while to throw that together and I'll show you how it's doing when we get it fired up. Alright folks, one final thing here before I put it inside of the uh, barrel. You can see the cable going up right here. That cable goes to our grate screen. And that'll actually be our gravity actuated grate screen uh, cable right here. Goes through a very fine hole in the lid to make sure there's almost zero air leak. And right now I just have some weight hanging on it. I gotta put a hook on the tank which we'll do once this is inside of the uh, barrel. But I wanted to show you just how that worked real quick. That was that final step inside of the reactor. And that'll allow us to dump anything. Like I said, those little prongs stop that grate from ever going any further. Give it guidance so it always comes right back up. So there we go. Our reactor is finally done. Other than the other side all the way at the bottom down there, I have to put the lid on. But I wasn't going to do that until the very end, obviously, because it wouldn't sit level like it does now. It would have made it very difficult to manufacture the rest of this. So let me go ahead and throw this in the barrel now. We'll manufacture and set up the uh, closing door on the other side, and I'll show you that. Install the pipe, like I said before, out of the side of the barrel. Hook up our fan, and we'll be ready to rock and roll. This system's just about ready to go. So give me just a moment. I'll have that set up for you. All right, folks, our system is just about done. We've installed it inside of the barrel, as you can tell if I back up here and let you see that. It's even got the hinged lid now on top. It's fully installed and ready to go. The last thing left after I show you what I've gotten done is to put our output pipe in the barrel. Everything else is ready. Uh, maybe a spring up at the top. I've still got to find one. So let's go ahead and walk you around real quick and show what we've got here. Uh, that cable that goes down to the lower grate, here's what I've got. I've got a lock washer here, or a lock nut with a washer on it and some bolts welded here. So you can pull the cable off, it goes through that small hole and you can raise and lower and shake that grate if you ever need to. It's real easy to operate, it catches itself on those lower prongs. You'll notice there's two bolts. One's for really nice and tight, that's going to keep it right to the rigid point. And if I want a little bit of a bounce to it, I can add it down to here and that'll give a, just a little bit of play going down a road to allow for it to shake some of that off of there on its own. But there's our rigid mount. We'll just put the washer on there and this lock nut and there you go. That's done and ready to go. And we'll tighten that all the way down in the end so that way it can't ever slip off. And that's to shake the bottom. Let me go ahead and take you up on top here, show you what we've got done. Alright, so here's our hinge top. I've got a, a bad shadow here, so let me turn. It's fully hinged. We can rock it all the way back now. It's going to keep itself open. Uh, the only thing I'm going to do now is add a spring to this on the other side of that. 
So there's our lid ready to go. Seals nice and tight right down on top. I got to put a pressure system up here and then also our CO2 input from the exhaust into this upper hole here. That's the last piece to get done there, but for now I'm going to plug it. Uh, you can tell the seal's dang good right here, and the weight of it's really heavy, so it's going to keep itself sealed. Other than a light spring, just to help that for any bouncing down the road, this is ready to go. So we're basically a sealed chamber now. Uh, we've got our ash dump. We've got our air intake pipes. Uh, Hi folks, Mr. Teslonian here. Uh, Yesterday I showed you just a quick film of this system just being tested real quick. We just threw a little bit of wood in there. I just wanted to see how it was going to work before filling it up a little bit further. Uh, let me go through some of the things that have happened on the last part of the build. You saw me put the top on. The last thing I had left was to extend this pipe or to weld a coupler on the barrel so I could put a 2 inch pipe off of this. Uh, the next part I've got here is in a heater exchange fan. This heater exchange fan comes from an RV propane powered heater. That was inside of there. It's a dual fan and it's got an external motor which is definitely going to be better to use. Typically you wouldn't use it this close to the reactor because I'm going to get drippage out of here from the bio crude oil basically that it's creating. Uh, so you'd want to put this after most of your filter system to start that process but just to show you how to do this I'm going to use it right here. Uh, we've got our air intake. I've got a couple buckets full of wood sitting right there so we're going to go ahead and open this up and I'm going to take the camera show you inside. I'm going to fill it up I'm going to light it up, turn on the fan, and I'm going to show you how this thing works from the inside there, how to set it up, how to start it. Uh, this should be a pretty good demonstration of the whole system in action before we integrate this into some filters, uh, into the radiator, and onto the truck. So give me just a moment. I'll grab the camera and show you how we're going to load this and how to start it up. All right, real quickly here, just want to show you the fan and the two-inch pipe that was welded out of the barrel here. What we really did was just weld a coupler. Uh, that way we can go to uh, any other fitting here. We can increase our diameter right outside of the barrel or decrease if we had to. Uh, so here's the fan. Like I said, it's just a dual-bladed system, side-by-side, side, pulling it in and push, pushing it out here. External motor is always going to be the best way to do this, obviously. So just wanted to show you that real quick. That gives us some range of mobility in our pipe size, and we can change that over. Uh, once again, we're just going to walk around here. Let me get up on top and put some of this wood inside of there, and I'll show you how to light it up. Alright, here we are on top of the reactor now. So here's the first steps. We've got a couple buckets full of material. I've got a box behind me with some starter stuff in it, some finer material, and some paper. And I'll show you that in a minute. Let's go ahead and look down inside of the reactor here. Let the camera focus in. Alright, you can see some of the ash floating around from our yesterday trial. Alright, so here we are looking down all the way into the bottom of our reactor from the top now. I'm going to zoom out again. Just let you see what that looked like down in there. We're looking all the way from the top here. We've opened up the lid. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to start this system out. It's going to be a little difficult here. I'm going to have to hold the camera slightly off to the side. And I'm going to drop some wood in there. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to fill that bottom grate screen area up with a few bigger pieces of wood. Stuff that are actually going to hit off down to the bottom like that one. That was a little guy. But we're actually going to try to fill some bigger chunks right on the bottom of that screen, so once that gets lit by the finer material up above, that one rested right there, so I'm not that out of the way. Uh, once they get lit, they'll actually keep the whole system burning really hot right from the beginning. Alright, well, they're kind of bunching up there, that won't matter too much. Alright, there we go. So what we're filming right now, it'll be a little difficult to tell, let me try to zoom in for you. Is we're still inside of that uh, elongated and narrowed spot, the actual uh, condensing area there that I showed you on the build. We haven't even filled up past the point of that yet, and that's what we're going to do. We throw some bigger stuff down the bottom now, and we're going to take some smaller stuff and start building up on top of that. This is just mixed sized wood that I cut up. Most of this was easier to cut with a machete than it would have been with a chainsaw. And right now, what we've done right there is basically some of those top pieces, you can see them resting now up on that upper ridge, are now up to the uh, area where the airflow starts to build. And that's just about right. So what we've done now is filled the screen area with some large pieces, and we've now got, uh, well, we've got some ash problems. We've now got some smaller stuff right on top of that, filling up the, the reduction zone. And now we're going to take uh, some really fine fire starting wood and some bark, 
and throw that down on top of that and then some paper to light it all. So give me a moment to grab some of the fire starter and I'll set that in there, show you what that looks like. All right, here's the final layer that I put inside as a starting layer. It's uh, more of a fine mix. It's got some bark mixed in there, some fine sticks. This lights really, really easily. So let's take a couple handfuls of that. We'll stick that down once again. Let's let the camera zoom in a little bit there. All right, so we're gonna fill that in on top where we just filled up the larger material. Let's go ahead and drop a couple of big handfuls of that down in there. Ah, uh, let's see. Got some stuff in the way. Still needs a little bit more, so let's give it a little bit more. All right, so there's our final load. That you can see how full that is. Now I'm going to drop in a bag full of paper. All right, I got down real quick here and turned on our fan. Maybe you can hear it running down there. That's going to be your first step. We've got our first load of the, our, all our small wood inside of there. I'm going to light this piece of paper trash on fire. I've got some paper trash inside of it. We're going to drop that down the hole. And we're going to drop some of this finer wood right on top of it. Of course, that's if the lighter wants to light for me here. There we go. All right, so we've got that lit. Let's give that just a second, try to get some material going. There it is down inside of there. May not have lit quite right. We might have to do this a few times. So you might see a couple edits. But if not, we'll get it right the first time here and just keep going. Just letting you know if you do see an edit from here, that's why. So I'm dropping in just a little bit of that finer wood here. And that's going to help me get some of it going right in the beginning. All right, it's going to be difficult. I'm going to have to stand pretty tall up here to, to keep that smoke from damaging my camera and the heat that's being generated. So we're going to watch that for a moment down in there. You can see how well it's already burning. Okay, we're going to let that paper trash and... Uh, those pieces of wood actually fully catch here before shutting our lid down. I don't know how well that's going to show up for you, but you can see the smoke's already starting to generate pretty thick here. All right, I can I can tell right now by the sound that we're getting pretty good ignition through the system. You can probably see in there and see uh, flames rolling around a little bit. Difficult to get the shot just right through the smoke and the glare and the sun and everything else. But you'll notice the smoke being generated right now out of the top is pretty good. Well, I'm going to go ahead and jump just a couple more handfuls of this stuff on there. I hear the paper being drawn down. All right. All right, our reactor now is fully started up from the initial start process. That's the paper trash finally catching most of the wood we dropped in there. You can see the smoke output from our fan is already pretty good. Uh, once you're really certain that the wood and the paper that you've put in there is fully on fire, what we're going to do is take a few of these buckets of wood right here, already ready to go, and we're going to dump that in on top of that once this is fully started. Make sure you don't put that in there until you're absolutely sure that what you started out with has already begun to coal. Otherwise, you'll just put it out and stop the whole reaction and you have to start all over again. And that can be really difficult since you don't want to start this from all the way up at the top somewhere. You want to make sure that reaction and the, the fire is all down there inside of that tank, down inside of your barrel. You also notice there our smoke contents getting thicker and thicker as this keeps going. All right, so let's go ahead and shut the lid for a moment and let that work with the lid shut until it's fully gotten our lower reduction zone uh, nice and cindered up. There's a lot of coals and red hot going on inside of there. Then we're going to dump these buckets in there. And you'll be able to tell that fan's really going to start pumping out the smoke here. Always remember when reopening your reactor top here, do not do it with your body above it. I'm going to go ahead and step down and away from this and get lower than it is because the flame that I've seen at night come out of the top of this is uh, a good 10 feet high and you really don't want to be in its path so always open it from down below down here which uh, this side I might have uh, some kind of pole top piece right here so you can get to that easily from down here 
open and shut the system and not expose yourself to a possible puff that these things can do. So give it a moment, let it puff, go up there, never put your body over the top once you've got any real reaction taking place. Don't learn that lesson the hard way. Keep everything out from above these things once you've got them going. Uh, so once again, that was just the safety part of it. You'll notice our smoke production is doing pretty well. That means right now what's happening is, is our fresh air input pipes are drawing that air right over the top of that paper trash and that wood we put in there, helping burn right there and then drawing down that fire through the center of all the, the restrictor area with the bigger wood we put in there. Once I'm confident that bigger wood's caught on fire and it's not just a bunch of paper burning, uh, we're going to go ahead and start filling it up with uh, buckets of material. So give me a moment, I'll set the camera up and you can see that from a distance. Alright, I'm pretty confident right now that we've got our reactor started well. I can tell by the smoke color and the output. I'm going to carefully open up the top of our reactor here from down low. I'm going to show you how to do this. Give that just a second just in case it wants to puff on you. I'm going to go around this other side. And I'm not going to expose my head any higher than this right now. And I'm going to take one of these buckets of material and go ahead and start feeding that tank. Because the real reaction that you're looking for inside of this system isn't taking place right there where the air jets are. The real reaction is the pyrolysis action. That's taking place due to the heat and pressure created at the burn zone above it. So now all the stuff I'm putting in now will actually create our synthetic gas we're looking for. So let me go ahead and dump one more bucket in there. Alright, I'm feeling a little more confident now that we've covered some of that. I can take a look. Alright, that looks like a pretty good load of wood. I'm going to leave some of that in there. I'll be out here for the next 10 hours if I keep filling this thing up, so I don't want to be here that long. Get rid of any of your top pieces here. And go ahead and shut down your top. It's ready to go now. We still have the spring to mount to this, but we'll do that before the project's all over. Hopefully you can see there that our smoke output is really thickening up. We can take a light or two that quickly. I doubt that's going to light quite yet, but uh, we can see how close it is. Neat thing is, is it wasn't putting out my lighter. That's pretty good for how quick that gas production. I'm actually already getting flare off. All right, so it's not putting out my lighter. That's a pretty good sign already. Uh, we're going to let that run for just a few minutes. And once it's up to temperature, this should be producing synthetic gas for us just fine. We should be able to walk up and light the smoke out of here with no problem. So let me let it warm up and I'll turn back on the camera. Alright, this is a pretty crude way to show you the synthetic gas and how well it lights. I'm going to have to hold this all together while I'm doing this. But you can see what I've got. It's just a tin can on two inch piece of pipe. I allow an airflow, And there you go. Synthetic gas is lit. There's a difference without it being lit. There you go. That's it. Lit. There you go. It's not quite enough airflow. We're not cooling the gas quite enough with such a short distance. And like always here, we've got a pretty decent wind. There we go. We've got a good flame rolling out of there. You notice the gas is not going anywhere. There we go. That's great synthetic gas production. As long as the lighter's hitting it, it'll burn it. The second you take it away, you'll notice it'll come back. It means I don't have it cool enough and I don't have quite enough airflow. So we're definitely going to produce more than enough fuel for our truck here. There we go. It's staying lit now. That was for a moment. I'm going to have to be careful not to lose my eyebrows with this or the wind turns on me. You can see when it does light, it disappears for a moment. It's lit right now. All right, well that's a pretty good showing. Without really getting it cooler, without mixing the proper airflow, it's about as good as an experiment to show you this as I'm gonna get. 